I've said it before and I'll say it again. I've said it a million times. The only thing that matters is who the fuck you choose to be when you're not getting your way. It's all fun and fucking games when everything's going your fucking way. When the bottom falls out. When the, when the tangible world, the material world, when everything around you is collapsing and falling apart, that's when the spiritual world is awakening. I'm trying to tell you guys, when it feels like everything's at a loss and everything is crumbling around you and breaking, that's when you're being molded. Do you guys not get that this is the moment that you're asking for that strength that you're going to need for your next level up? Every time be right after my life fully fell apart, I leveled up massively because they were relationships and I was pushing against like an immovable object, which was an individual that would not work with me. So here I am just working so hard, pushing against it, pushing against it, pushing against it. And then once that person was removed out of my life, bam, I propelled forward so quick. And this was what happened in my first marriage. I'm not saying that it's always positive to go through breakups and lose people. But when you don't get along with people, there is too much of an energy loss there. It doesn't mean someone is right or wrong or this or that or everybody has to blame each other. Some people just don't vibrate. They just don't have the same core beliefs and core values. I always get along with my people because I share exactly who I am. So they should know. And if down the road a long time, they start to realize, hey, this guy is who the fuck he is. Maybe I don't agree with a lot that he has to say and who he is. So that's my bad. And that, that's clients of mine. That's relationships I've been in. That's everything. So I just don't change. I'm the immovable object. I'm the origin of this. I know what's best for you. You're going to try to break because you want comfort. I'm going to hold you to what works. And since I won't bend, there's always a lot of friction in that growth, that growth path, that growth stage right there. So I'm the best coach because I don't miss. And if I don't miss, you can't. What coaches choose not to miss and they do it with you. They'll get, they're good at telling you how to do it, but they don't fucking do it with you. They're older. They've been doing it for a long time. They have proven practices. They're tried and true. They have systems that work. That's fine. But are they still in the trenches with you? I know it's mindset. I know it's my ability to overcome me that will have me consistently elevating. I know I'm talented enough. I know I've learned enough about my systems where they can run and operate. But guess what? My soul erodes when I don't push myself. If I don't work hard every day, I feel soft every day. So this is where everybody loses their, this is where everybody loses their confidence, loses their lust for life, loses that connection. It's because they fail to force progression. See, I don't try to find hacks. I force progression by making myself go harder. I force myself to go harder. I know that that heightened frequency, the proper mindset, the positive mood that I want is on the other side of me really trying my hardest. You guys may think that it's on the other side of the result. For me, it's on the other side of the what I exert to get the result. So how hard I try. I don't, I don't want to hack. And sometimes how hard I try is the formulation of the plan. So that could be looked at as a hack by someone who's not such a cognitive person. So I'm very, I'm a very conscious person. I've always thought up systems and ways about stuff that other people don't. I've told you from the beginning, talent hits a target. Genius hits a target or talent. hits a target other people can't hit. Genius hits a target others can't see. A lot of the stuff I do, nobody else could see until I said it. And then they're very aware of it. Now, when they're aware of it, they regurgitate it till it's death. But the whole thing is, is only the practicing of this belief or this system or this mindset trick or understanding is, is what brings it into fruition and makes it real for the party who preaches it. So, like, you know, if you don't apply, then 
you don't even understand it. To know and not to do is not to fucking know. So if you're not doing it, if you're not living it, you don't know about it. This is a whole fucking thing. I love you guys so much. I, you know, I'm going through some, a situation. You guys know. You guys can tell. And um, it doesn't even phase me, you guys, because I've learned to release what I wish to possess. So I release love to Angie and the girls. I, if they reached out, then I would do anything for them. And um, we just, I was happy with her. I, I was happy with Angie. Angie's like the most beautiful person on the planet to me. And I would want to be with her. She doesn't want to be with me. So that, that's the thing. Like she would always try, but we just don't mesh well in her eyes. Not in mine. I'm, I'm, I was completely thrilled with my family. I love them all. But I'm just a certain way that she, I dysregulate her is the word. I don't know how the fuck that even means. I don't know what that fucking even means. But since I kind of operate in a constant state of what she would call dis dysregulation, but I operate like a constant state of uh, maybe mania where I'm moving so fast. I'm always like, who I'm always that state dysregulates her, but that's my optimal state. I, I remember Ace. Uh, my boy from San Diego said most there's a the billionaire edge. It's like a book and it talks about um, controlled mania and a lot of billionaires are manic. They just have controlled mania. That's why they they do so much. They're they're frantically solving problems like their whole life to where they move faster than everyone else. That state dysregulates her. So I, just, I can't my normal being throws someone off and we we can't mesh well. But I mean. You can relay her the message or whatever. She was always just too beautiful for words to me. But this is why it doesn't hurt me. It doesn't bother me. Because I was never, it's never truly wrong. It's just me. Like, I am someone that some people can't accept and take. And maybe they need someone who's not just straight out marking it. But I don't know how the video turned into this. But guess what? I'm going out with some buddies of mine. And I don't drink. And I go hang out and maybe they do and they party, they're from out of town and I don't and I never will. And I get to show people that I can roll up, have a good time. I don't stay long, but I like to go enjoy the town with them. And I even did that before when friends are in town, we would go eat. But you guys, that's a powerful thing to sit around them, not judge them. They know I judge in the content and shit but not judge them in person and just kick it. And they're wondering, um, you know, hey, why, you don't want to drink or anything like that? You don't want to do any of this shit? No, I don't even think about it. It means nothing to me. And that's just a powerful thing to be able to sit there around people who are controlled by the substance. They think they need it and you're proving that it's not needed. It's probably more powerful than even saying anything. But in proximity, you can't just sit there and yell at people about their choices. They know how you stand on it. You just leave it at that. And you're just like, this guy ain't judging me. He don't even give a fuck. He just wants to enjoy everybody. And he knows everybody's at different stages of their evolution. I love you guys. This video is kind of mixed up. I've had a, had a kind of crazy day. Um, was up way too late last night. Still got all my stuff in. But man, it was one of those like zombie dragging fucking low frequency, low energy days. But I just had to get it done for you guys. I love you guys. Let's go.